Hello, and welcome to our July episode of Hingham Happenings. I'm your host, Katherine Collins. Let's take a look at what we have coming up on this episode. Barnes & Noble hosted a My Favorite Teacher contest. Hingham Sports Partnership had its fourth annual fashion show luncheon. The Sioux Escuela Language Academy held its fifth annual South Shore International Festival. HCAM covered the Grand Slam Story Slam. A local author signing was held at Barnes & Noble. All this and more coming up next on Hingham Happenings. Middle and high school students from the South Shore were invited to take part in an essay contest sponsored by Barnes & Noble. Students were given the opportunity to thank and acknowledge teachers that had made a difference in their academic careers and inspired them in the form of poems, short letters, essays, etc. HKM was thrilled to be a part of this day filming it and I actually had a great time as I got to judge some of the essays. It's amazing to see what the teachers in our area are capable of. So tonight we're holding the ceremony for My Favorite Teacher Contest. Every year Barnes & Noble holds a contest where we ask students to write to us about their favorite teachers and what makes them so special and inspiring. And then each year we have the inenviable task of going through all these great submissions and picking winners and honorable mentions. We had three judges. We were fortunate enough to have three wonderful community members come and volunteer their time to judge. Uh, the first two judges are authors from the local area. The first is Monica Tesler. She's a, a YA author. She wrote Bounders. And then the other is uh, Roy Harris Jr. He wrote um, Pulitzer's Goal. And then we had a third uh, judge as well, actually from Hingham Community Access, one of your coordinators, Catherine Collins, uh, graciously stepped up and, and volunteered to adjudicate the, the uh, entries as well. And so they read them. Uh, it takes a while. We have a lot of entries. They read through them. Um, they try to get an idea of what the compelling nature of the teacher's qualities are and you know how impassioned and sincere the students are being when they talk about them. And then we also usually use as a tiebreaker because so many of them are so fantastic uh, the quality of writing and expression that the student provides. Karen Anderson is the student who chose me. She wrote uh, an extremely nice essay about me. In her essay she mentioned a couple of things. Um, so I, I've been a teacher at Weymouth High for um, 13 years now but it was my 11th year when her teacher needed to go out um, with an illness and I kind of just stepped in and started started teaching that class just because someone had to and it was an honors level class they really needed like an experienced teacher who knew what they were doing to keep them on pace but um, she also spoke about the her father passed away last year and I didn't think anything of it at the time but I was like I need to go to this to this wake and Again, it wasn't something I put a lot of thought into. It seemed natural. I should be there. This is important. Um, but when I read her essay and her talking about it and her being meaningful, it being meaningful to her was, it was an emotional experience. It meant a lot to me that, that it mattered and that I was doing something, that my actions impacted someone in such a positive way. I've had Mr. Galusha since the ninth grade. He was my world history teacher, and I actually have him this year for AP Psychology. He just puts effort into everything he does and he wants us all to be successful and like as students we feel that so we want to be more successful and we're motivated to you know work as hard as we can. At the beginning of my essay I kind of talk about how on the first day of ninth grade history this was the first day ever of high school for me. He wanted us to read a 40 page packet and he wanted to quiz us on it the next day so for me I was like that's crazy you know and I just remember the night before though he told us that if we wanted success would have to earn it. You know, it didn't just come from sitting around, we'd actually have to do the work to earn the success and to be successful students in the future. So that just, you know, ever since that day, I've just put a lot of effort into all the work I've done for all my classes. Abigail, I think, really encapsulated um, what I try to do, and that's what really was touching, um, to, to hear her uh, talk about how she's become a student through the four years. She talked about maturing and about developing a work ethic and a skill set that would make her successful. Um, and that's what I'm most touched by, by Abby, is that I think she really got that. Um, she understands why we are at school, 
and she's latched onto that. And I know that's going to make her successful in whatever she does. Teachers often go unsung, what they do in the classroom, how they're affecting the students. The student knows it, the teachers know it, uh, oftentimes the people who work closely with the schools know it, uh, but the general community might not be aware of just the caliber of teacher that they have in their community. I think that this is our way of kind of highlighting that, shining a spotlight on something that if you're not intimately involved in the school system, you might not get a chance to see. My goal as a teacher is to, at the end of the day, become useless. I want to make sure that my students are able to get the skills that they need and the guidance that they need to take whatever that next step is for them. Um, so it's important to be both a mentor and an advisor, uh, but someone who's really cultivating those, 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 those next things that they're going to need to continue. As somebody who taught in his past life, if you will, um, I can definitely tell you that if you're able to connect with a student on a level that goes beyond the curriculum, on a level that goes beyond just the 45 minutes to an hour that you have them in your class, you can really help them in ways that you can't even imagine. Uh, you can be a mentor, uh, a friend, uh, a parental figure. There are a lot of different ways and you often don't know and realize how you're affecting that student um, until sometimes many years later or until maybe they write an essay about you at a contest. Kingham Sports Partnership held its annual fashion show luncheon at Atlantica Restaurant this year. Many of Hingham's female residents were proud to strut local fashions and accessories for such a good cause. Um, Hingham Sports Partnership Fashion Show. Well, it's a fundraiser for uh, the Hingham Sports Partnership, and we uh, we subsidize programs in town for youth sports all the way up to the high school. It's the first time we've done it at Atlantica. The previous times we were in Hingham, actually, but you know this is a popular event. Ladies in Hingham like to come support one another and support programs in town, so we had to move to a bigger venue. Our chairs of the event today are Mary Farrington and Liz Bian Fang and Carrie Erickson and they have a committee that they've been working with and they started months ago uh, to begin to plan for this. You know, it involves working with our local companies to see if we can get some retailers who will partner with us and today we have uh, pink tulip from Cohasset and cloth from Hingham as well as details and goods from Hingham that, uh, that are partnering with us. Then you have to find the models. That can sometimes be challenging, but uh, we're very fortunate that we have 12 women from Hingham who have agreed to model with us today. We love to have local moms in Hingham participate in this fashion show, and quite frankly, it's not an easy ask. People are nervous, but we've got great clothes, we had great hair and makeup, and they will look fabulous in the clothes uh, that they're modeling for the three boutiques that agreed to help us out. I think, um, you know, the, the, the models who have agreed to, um, you know, be our models today, I think all really believe in the cause of HSP and have seen the work we've been doing over the years. So um, we're really very grateful to those models for agreeing to do this. It's hard. You have to be really brave to stand in front of a, a group of 170 women and, and models. So kudos to them. I have two little boys. Uh, who both are part of the program. I have been involved in the community for Hingham Sports Partnership. I run a lot of fitness classes in the area for kids, and I'm a coach um, in the town. But it's been really fun. I got my hair done, I got my makeup done, I got people to pick out outfits, so super fun. I think anytime you're bringing people from the community together and um, getting a chance to showcase different people's strengths and showcase our vendors and showcase what we can bring to the environment, um, it's just a nice way to kind of pull everybody together. The reason why we started this fashion show was we have a big golf event in June every year, uh, the Tom Hoffman annual golf event, and we found that most of our people that attended that event were all men in our community, and so we felt like we wanted to do a fundraiser that was geared more towards the women in our community, and so hence the, the beginning of the Hingham Sports Partnership Fashion Show. Well, fashion is fun, and uh, this event, it combines fashion with charity and ultimately athletics. So who doesn't love to, to go to an event that encompasses all three of those things? 
Kingham Sports Partnership was created um, more than 20 years ago, back in 1995. And at the time it was created by a very small group of parents, mostly high school parents, who were interested in trying to offer more athletic programs to their sons and daughters and to do more than what the athletic budget in our town allowed for. And so, you know, that from 20 years to today, a lot has changed with Hingham Sports Partnership. Over those 20 years, we've reinvested $2 million in our community. And we're no longer just focused on high school sports. Today, we focus on youth sports as well as our community. We've just uh, given a $12,000 grant to the Hingham Maritime Center to buy Opti boats, one which is sort of, you can see here in the back of me. So we're very focused on our community, very focused on youth sports. We just did a $7,000 grant to the youth softball organization to try to help re-energize softball for the youth in Hingham. And of course, we're always very focused on our high school athletes as well. The group of people that make up the Hingham Sports Partnership are devoted and dedicated to raising money for athletics and sports in this town. So if you've got a child uh, in Hingham, they could benefit from this. And that's why people are, we're so glad that people are so generous. Go to HinghamSports.com. There's all sorts of ways to volunteer. You can be a sponsor. You can um, be a booster. So if people want to get involved, you can be on the board. You can be a supporter. You can donate things to any kind of event. It's a fun day. We get to have a great lunch. And you get to see the latest fashions from local companies. It's an opportunity to hang out with people and connect with people that I don't get to see and be in a relaxed environment and, and raise money. The South Shore International Festival was a great success here at the Hingham Shipyard. The Sioux Escuela Language Academy of Hingham was proud to bring the South Shore together for this fun-filled event. Today we have an international festival. It's celebrating in the South Shore. Um, art, music, food, uh, dance, um, for all the cultural and international festivities. My role with Sua Escuela, I have been part of the school for a number of years. I'm also a parent, so I've been involved for, uh, my son participated 10 years ago, and then when Sandra opened up the preschool in Cohasset, uh, my daughter attended from the age of two, and now she's a third grader in the elementary school, so I'm been so delighted to be part of the school as a parent and my background is in education so she asked me to come on board and help her grow her elementary school division so I've been with her doing that for the last five years. Sua Escuela has been in Hingham for 10 years and we have been a school that celebrates and teaches our students about cultural experiences and languages and teaches the students how to access cultures and make global relations. So it's very important for us to reach out into the community and share that. The community that we have in the South Shore has so much to offer in the way of cultural education. So we want to make that uh, nice connection with our community. I think events like this are really important because it brings families together. Families shouldn't just be texting. What I like here is I don't see anybody texting. I don't see anybody on their telephones. It's a family day and everybody is having an enjoyable, wonderful day together. We have a lot of people helping us today. First, our students are performing, and they perform in three languages, in Mandarin, in Spanish, and in English. They had dances and uh, songs that they performed. And then we have uh, students from the Chinese uh, dance school in Quincy. We have Irish step dancers. Uh, we have kettle drums. We have um, all sorts of international foods, we have international coffees, and all sorts of international uh, representatives uh, at our vendor booths uh, to help support our mission today. So this is our fifth year, so we're, we're getting much better at planning. Uh, we have much more uh, resources from the community. Everybody's very excited when we start to bring up the festival. So we really have a lot of support with it. Uh, we have people, you know, families look forward to it every year. The kids love to see the events and go around to the vendors and um, enjoy what they have to offer. So we have um, collectively as a school, Su Escuela puts it together, but we have so much community help uh, to make it successful. I think Su Escuela is amazing. I think they do a phenomenal job. To be able to 
speak two languages at age four, five, and six, and to do it well, and then go home and share it with your parents, I think that's pretty phenomenal. I think that kids are learning to play together, cooperate, share, enjoy one another's company, and simply have a good time in their childhood. I think it's really important for the community to see what they have right here around them. Uh, I think sometimes people don't understand how much diversity we have right before us. You don't have to travel far to enjoy um, a lot of different cultures. For our students, they feel that Costa Rica or Chile is a part of their family uh, community, and we think that kids in our neighboring environments, Hingham or Situate or anywhere in the South Shore, they can have that feeling too. And there's amazing families, they have so much background in, in different areas that they bring to us on this day and it's really fun to share. I think that planning at Sua Escuela that students from early on can learn and appreciate culture from a very young age. Uh, learning a language is an absolute gift and from a young age, if students can have that gift, um, it's a lifelong um, ability that they can have and, and share with others in the future. And it opens so many doors for their world in the future. And that's what I'm, I'm so happy about. Well, they can get involved by watching their local newspaper, looking at uh, places that post the kinds of family events. They're having them in every town now in uh, the state of Massachusetts. And it's very easy because you can look it up on the internet, you can look it up in the newspaper, and it's, there's something going on in every town for communities today. As you can see right now, I'm in front of our studios in Hingham. Most of the events we film are in Hingham, but we took a bit of a field trip a few weeks ago to go to the Fuller Craft Museum for the Grand Slam Story Slam, where storytellers from all over the South Shore gathered. Tonight we are having the best of the best of the South Shore Storytelling Slams and Doyle's in JP. They will come up, they're competing for the grand prize, prize which is um, a main getaway in Wells, Maine. I've been a storyteller for 23 years. I founded a group called Mass Mouth. Up until that point, people thought that storytelling was for children in libraries. Clearly it is not. This event is about, not so much about the prize, it's about crafting the best story in the short amount of period that you have. Storytelling is very community building. It takes a person's story to let people know how they are connected. Oh, I love the community building in this event. Nobody knew each other and people are now talking with the tellers because they are reminded of a story or they have something that is in common with that story and they want to talk to that teller. If you scan the room, you will see that we have a room full of people talking to each other that did not know each other before they came to this event. I have no idea why I wanted to tell a story, but I did. I think people are really attracted to it, especially now storytelling is, a, is so a loved by everybody. Storytelling, it's everywhere, and I think people really, really enjoy it. I read that they were going to be at the Hingham Library, and I thought, I'm going to go and tell a story. And what mattered to me was that I made the effort and that I, I did it was not easy to do. So I'm really glad I did. The story I told tonight was how when I was 17 years old I got pregnant and I gave up my child for adoption and I realized my life was falling apart and that I really wanted to be to find my son and I searched for him for 41 years until the government paid it possible for me to look at his adoption records and I found him and it was the happiest day of my life, and it continues to make me very, very happy that I have found my son. My first experience was reading about it in the Hingham Journal. No, I was at the Hingham Library, and I read about it, and I wanted to do it, and we were supposed to go away, and I got really grumpy, and I said, I want to stay, and I want to go to the Story Slam and do the Story Slam, and I wouldn't let my husband come with me, and what I didn't know at the time was that you couldn't read it. You had to tell it off by heart. 
but he made me go. I was going to back out, but he made me go, and they picked my name. They pick a number of people to tell the stories. They picked my name, and I got up, and I told the story as best I could remember it with not reading it, and I won. And then uh, that gave me an opportunity to come to the final. And I told, I, you had to tell the same story that you won with, and I told the same story, which is a, my best story. It's my, it's my heart story. It brings the community out. And it brings people from outside of the community in. And this is very beneficial to all of us, my town, your town, any town. We want to work with the community. We want the community to know that we're here. We want to play nicely in public and invite everyone, send everyone home having had a wonderful time. Send everyone home having learned something new. Send everyone home saying, my word, I never knew. Now you know, and now you'll come and play next time. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, I practiced, the first time I told the story, I practiced in front of the mirror. I set a timer because there's a time limit. Uh, the time limit the first time was five minutes. Tonight it's only four minutes. So I had to get it down a little bit. I had to um, focus on the important details and edit myself. Today I've just sort of been trying to calm down. I went out to dinner with some friends and I realized that there's one winner and then there's everyone else. So the worst possible scenario is that I'm one of everybody else. I think anything that gets people together, even if it's just running into someone at, you know, at the dump, is a good thing, or the farmer's market or something like that. But when you're having a, a shared experience with people that maybe you don't know that well, but you've seen around town, definitely, I think, it, I think it, it builds connections and creates more of a community. In the fall, I will be coming to Hingham Cable, um, doing a show once a month. If you like this, you will love what we're going to do in Hingham. So stay tuned. Barnes & Noble invited people to attend an author signing event. The author was very well received and left people feeling inspired. So today we brought in uh, Plymouth author Ann Jewelis to do a presentation on the book that she wrote, Grace Trail. Ann came to me, uh, I have a lot of authors come to me wanting to do different things, and so when I met with Ann, she was just so full of energy and passion for what she wrote and her work and the story that she had to tell uh, that it was really clear right off the bat that this was somebody that we wanted to bring into the store. And Joe, she's worked with many a time, she's uh, used him with soundtracks for videos, promotional materials. And as well as, as we saw today, the live performances. Cause I'm just gonna inhale and exhale Take my first step on the great trail Walking off my wall. She asked me to sing the song. Uh, the song is called The Grace Trail. It's written specifically for her book, The Grace Trail. Anne and I go back a long way. We've been friends for like 15 years and she's a life coach and so I was doing some work with her. Personally, I mean, she's, I've come to her uh, in a mess. <laughs> Where do I go? What do I do? And uh, she's given me some tools to be more organized and be in touch with my heart. In 2012, when my son was in Afghanistan, I found it uh, very hard to cope. I found the whole uh, reality of being able to talk to them, see them on Facebook, whatever. It really knocked me off my feet. So I decided to make an inspirational trail right in Plymouth, Mass, that I could walk every day. And now hundreds of people are walking it every day. So it's catching on, it's sort of a phenomenon and a movement. But people don't have to go to Plymouth to walk the Grace Trail. People really can walk the Grace Trail anywhere, and they're walking it all over the country. The Grace Trail process is a trail that helps people engage in conversations of inspiration, hope, and resiliency. So there are five questions that naturally flow from these five words. What can I be grateful for? What can I release or let go of now to lighten my load? What's calling out for acceptance in my life? How do I want to challenge myself right now? What can I embrace as possible in my life? 
after the presentation, we always like to have the authors get a chance to come up and interact with people one on one. Oftentimes, you know, you're sitting, you have the microphone, and uh, it feels like there's a little bit of a separation there. And Anne was very enthusiastic about the ability to get up and shake hands and hug and get into physical proximity with the people who came out to support her and who were interested by her stories. And so I think she really wants to personalize and make every message that she gives, whether it's in her book, in person, uh, through a video, or on her website, um, the ability to feel like it's something that's customized for them. And I think that, that she just translated that into how she signs her books. She wants everybody to feel like that book is uh, signed specifically for them, wherever they are, and whatever they might be going through. I think people in general are looking for something to give them peace and a sense of belonging. It's important, you know, the, the world is in a, a tough place. Everybody knows it. It's chaotic. And this is a place of positive growth and change and hope and a place of refuge. It's wonderful. It just makes you think about your life and, and what you're looking for in your life and, and looking for grace. Everyone should be looking for grace. I hope my audience finds that they can find peace in the middle of chaos, that they can find their way on the grace trail when they feel like they're struggling. I hope they find hope, because that's what I find. Every time I walk the grace trail, I feel a little more hopeful at the end. And that's what I want to share with the world. You can go onto my website, onto gracetrail.com. You can sign up for my newsletter. And when you do that, you'll get a map of the trail. You'll get the five questions and you'll get an inspirational story. I wrote a short story, a 30-page short story. It's called Walking Off Your War. And it's about a woman who makes it through a really tough time and she gets through to the other side to come home to the new normal. And she's not liking the new normal very much. So she starts to walk the grace trail. So it's a story about anyone getting through anything and how they walk from despair and sadness to a place of hope and possibility on the grace trail. JoeMerrick.com. I'm um, on Facebook. Joe Merrick on Facebook. Everybody needs a little support. Hope to see you on the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna rock and roll. Have a good time. That's all for this month, but tune in next time for another exciting episode of Hingham Happenings. And in the meantime, if you have any ideas, please email us at hinghamhappenings at hinghammedia.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and see you next time. Mm -hmm.